Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. So last time we talked about dot plot. Uh, dot plot is a simplest method of uh, pairwise sequence comparison in which two sequences uh, when they are compared with each other so it gives you the region of similarity uh, uh, in terms of diagonal so it's a visual representation that uh, which region of, of two sequences in question they have the similar region and those similar region can be identified uh, using the dot uh, the diagonals that we can see on the uh, plot so today we will discuss about uh, dynamic programming for sequence alignment and for that we will be discussing Needleman's and Wunsch algorithm for global alignment. Uh, if you remember the previous uh, lectures we talked about dynamic programming. Now dy dynamic programming is breaking down a larger problem into smaller sub problems and then solve each sub problem in order to solve the bigger problem. Okay. And when we uh, talk about uh, sequence alignment, uh, then uh, dynamic programming is a computational method to find the best optimal alignment between two sequences. And in this method, uh, the, the, the algorithm compares every character in the two sequences and generates an alignment. Okay. So there are different components of an alignment. In an alignment, we can have matches, we can have mismatches, and we can have caps. Now, what do we mean by these three terms? Uh, let's understand these three concepts or these three terms uh, using this example. Suppose we have two strings of characters. String number one is we are humans, and we have another string we are not humans. And when we align these two sequences together uh, to, with each other, and when we, you know, try to uh, uh, place them you know beside each other uh, end to end uh, you can see that uh, we are w e a r e these are the characters that are you know matching with the uh, uh, characters present in the other string so these uh, this this region of uh, these two uh, strings they are aligning with each, each other and uh, this uh, red rectangle is showing that these uh, characters in these two strings they are not aligning or they uh, the, they are not matching with each other so these are all mismatches so matches are those characters that are same uh, in the two uh, in, in two strings and mismatches are those that are not same uh, in in uh, uh, two strings okay so uh, let's do another thing uh, in the same uh, string uh, using these two, two strings uh, we will try to align again but with little variation and what we are doing here we are introducing some gaps in the string one so we are introducing three gaps in string number one and by introducing these three uh, gaps you can see that the alignment is now uh, uh, has become better as compared to our previous alignment in the previous alignment we had five uh, uh, characters uh, that were you know uh, were matching and uh, that were aligned with each other and now by introducing three gaps in one of the string now we have 10 uh, characters that are uh, matching or aligning with each other and only one uh, character is now uh, mismatched okay so why we are introducing these gaps because you know that during the course of evolution sometimes uh, uh, th there are some mutations and because of these mutations these these little variations uh, there can be some uh, uh, mismatches as you can see here that in one of the string there is an s and in the other string there is a z at that position and int uh, introducing introduction of gaps means that you know maybe some of the some uh, sequences they can you know gain some uh, nucleotides they can lose some nucleotides and uh, just to you know uh, overcome these gain and loss of uh, some genetic material uh, we can also you know introduce these gaps okay so next we will uh, take uh, another example uh, and here we have a query sequence a dna uh, a string of uh, nucleotides with that is a t g g c and g and then we generate two alignments so alignment one uh, we have one gap and uh, some other nucleotides they are aligning with each other and there is an alignment two also okay so here you can see that in both these alignments a1 and a2 there is, there is just one gap okay but how can we uh, you know select or how can we identify which of these two alignment is better okay so then uh, comes the uh, concept of scoring scheme because uh, obviously if we are uh, uh, adding some gaps 
uh, for in, in, uh, during the alignment process or if there are some mismatches so obviously there should be a score for each of these so uh, there should be a sc some score for matches obviously if two the two nucleotides or two characters they are matching with each other there should be a score and obviously a positive score uh, and whenever there is a, a, a mismatch then there should be a, a penalty and for gaps also there must be a penalty for the gaps okay so at the end the total score is the sum of all matches and penalties and the total score will reflect the quality of that alignment so if we have multiple alignments possible we will choose that alignment which has the highest score so going back to the same uh, example and using the scoring scheme of plus one for every match that we find and minus one for every mismatch and uh, zero for gaps okay uh, for this example we are just ignoring the gaps so we are give, uh, giving no score to the gaps so plus one for each match and minus one for mismatch so when we uh, calculate the score for uh, both these alignments uh, you can see that uh, uh, the final score of alignment number one is one whereas uh, for alignment number two the uh, score is uh, three okay so we will uh, out of these two alignments a1 and a2 we will prefer or we will take alignment number two because it has the maximum score so now you have gained some idea about uh, um, what is a score uh, what's a scoring scheme and what are matches mismatches and gaps uh, now let's uh, again refresh into your memories we already have discussed about what is a global alignment at local alignment and uh, adjust you know uh, to summarize global in global alignment what we are doing we are doing alignment of both sequences end to end so we align both sequences uh, end to end and we prefer this um, uh, algorithm for sequences that are similar or that are you know evolutionary close to each other whereas uh, local alignment is a type of alignment where uh, we align stretches of sequences with the highest density of matches means that if two sequences they are evolutionary divergent or they are uh, not similar then uh, we are not interested in end-to-end -end alignment rather we are interested uh, which which uh, um, part or region of the two sequences they are similar uh, for example if we are uh, looking for some motifs or domains that are conserved uh, throughout evolution okay so in that case uh, case we will uh, we uh, generally uh, go for local alignment okay uh, and uh, today since we are uh, we will be discussing about Needleman's and Wood algorithm and that is to generate a global alignment and uh, basically Needleman's and Woods they, they were the two, two scientists and uh, they uh, used dynamic programming for sequence alignment for the first time and this is the paper that was published in 1970 and uh, uh, the same dynamic programming approach was used for local alignment by two, uh, two other guys uh, Smith and Waterman uh, in 1981 and both these uh, uh, algorithms you know they are based on dynamic programming uh, one is used to for, for global alignment and the other one is used for local alignment so we will st uh, stick with the global alignment for this uh, lecture so uh, in Needleman's and Wunsch algorithm, let's uh, uh, you know uh, start with the algorithm directly. So there are different steps in Needleman's and Wunsch algorithm. The first step is to initialize n into m matrix. Uh, so obviously it's a pairwise sequence alignment. So we'll have two sequences. Uh, sequence one will can be you know considered as n, and sequence two can be considered as m, or or vice versa. And both these sequences will be placed, you know, along the matrix, along the x and y axis of a matrix, just like we did for the uh, dot plot. But unlike dot plot, where uh, we were just comparing two sequences, uh, sorry, two characters uh, at a time, and uh, using a word size we uh, used to uh, generate the diagonals, here we will be using some scoring scheme. Okay, I will uh, talk about this later. And the second step is to fill the matrix from upper left corner of the uh, upper left corner of the matrix to the lower right corner in a recursive fashion okay recursive fashion means that uh, there are uh, you know some steps uh, and these steps will be repeated again and again till we uh, reach the lower right corner of the matrix and obviously we will be using some uh, scoring scheme and the final step is to 
uh, is the traceback step we will, where we will actually uh, generate the alignment okay uh, so let's uh, uh, start with the Lidl bands and Wunsch algorithm to generate lo uh, global alignment and uh, for this uh, we'll start with simplest example that we have uh, two sequences sequence one is T G G T G and sequence two is A T C G and T okay so both these sequences are uh, five uh, nucleotides long okay so they are of equal length so we we, we just you know uh, uh, denoting sequence 1 as M and sequence 2 as N. Now the first step of Needleman's and Wunsch algorithm is to initialize table T. Okay, so whatever is the table we uh, we are denoting that table as uh, T. So here is the table. Okay, so here is uh, uh, so th there are five uh, nucleotides in each of these two sequences. So we will generate a 6 by 6 matrix for this uh, computation. Okay, as you can see uh, in, in, in the figure here, okay, so here's a matrix, uh, 6 by 6 matrix and uh, M or sequence 1 is written on the X axis of the matrix and sequence uh, 2 or N is written as the, uh, on the Y axis, okay, and each cell along the, hor ho along horizontal um, uh, axis is considered as I is equal to 0, I is equal to 1, I is equal to, uh, up to I is equal to 5. So I is representing the uh, horizontal axis, whereas verti vertical axis is uh, denoted by J, and it also uh, goes from 0 to 5. So what is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5 here? Uh, they are basically the address of a particular cell. We'll discuss in the next slide. So here's the same table uh, that we saw in the previous slide, and now you can see that in one of the cell or one of the square inside this uh, matrix or table T is colored as green. Now, uh, how to you know call out this cell, or what is the address of the cell? Because obviously, when we are uh, we are uh, doing it computationally, so we'll have some uh, specific expression to call out, call for this cell. So this green color uh, is uh, one of the cell of this matrix, and T uh, means table. T of IJ is the cell at the intersection of row I and column J. Okay, so here you, this cell is the T of 4 and 3, means uh, this cell is uh, from I4 and J3. Okay, as you can see, this is uh, let me see, this is I4 and J3. So this is how we represent a particular cell in the uh, matrix. Now, which cell is T of I minus one and J minus one? Okay. So here I is uh, four. Okay. So four minus one is equal to three, and J is three. Uh, j minus 1 is 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. So when we are saying uh, i minus 1, j minus 1, we are basically uh, referring to the cell that is t of 3 and 2. And t of 3 and 2 is here. So what we are doing, we are talking about this particular cell. Okay. Or we are moving to uh, along the uh, diagonal here. Next question, which cell is T of I J minus 1? So again, I is 4 here and J is 3 and J minus 1 is 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. So what we are saying, we are saying T of 4 and 2. T of 4 and 2 is this one. Okay, Let me give it a different color. So when we are saying T of I J minus one, uh, we are talking about this particular cell, which is colored as yellow. The next question, which cell is T I minus one J? So you, you can calculate it yourself. And what we are, talk, uh, we are talking about this particular cell here, which is colored as blue, okay? 
so this thing will uh, help you in uh, while while uh, doing this uh, algorithm on paper okay so you need to understand this concept very clearly now the first step uh, i mean in, in while initializing a table uh, what we are doing we are generating the table we are um, generating a, a matrix of m into n and then uh, what's the first step the first step of uh, Needleman's and Bunch algorithm is to initialize the cell T of 0 and 0 to 0. Okay, so we are initializing this cell uh, with a score of 0. And then we will be moving uh, from top left corner to the bottom right corner and we'll uh, fill out each cell. We'll move along the uh, we'll move along uh, horizontally okay so let's fill up this matrix uh, using Needleman's and Wunsch algorithm and for this example we will be following the scoring scheme uh, in this example we will use or we will give a plus one score for every match that we will find and we'll give a score of minus one for every mismatch and uh, we will give a gap penalty of minus two uh, for every insertion and deletion here and uh, to compute the score for a, uh, for a cell in question, for a specific cell, uh, we will be calculating the score using this expression. Now this expression seems uh, difficult, but it's, it's actually very easy. So uh, we'll just use this expression and then you'll understand what does this, it, it means, okay? So let's start with this example and before uh, proceeding further I'll, I'll recommend you guys to pause pause this video uh, get a paper and pencil uh, draw a matrix and start filling this matrix uh, with me in this uh, way you will be able to understand uh, quickly okay uh, so let's start the first cell that we will be um, computing score for is this one that is t of 1 0 remember 1 is i and 0 is j okay so we have to compute the score for t 1 0 now let's use this expression uh, to compute the score for this uh, this cell here uh, this one this is ti minus 1 j minus 1 now uh, for this uh, cell ti minus 1 j minus 1 is something here which actually does not exist so there is nothing come coming from uh, this position okay now let's move to ti minus 1 j now i minus 1 j is i is 1 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 and j is also 0 so t 0 of 0 is uh, this particular cell and we have a score of 0 present in this cell. So what we will do we will add to this score a gap penalty of minus 2. So we will have a score of minus 2 for this cell. Now we will see t i j minus 1. i is 0 sorry 1 and j minus 1 is 0 which turns out to be minus 1 and this cell should reside somewhere here which actually does not exist so we are not getting anything from this cell also okay so the only score that we are getting for this particular cell is uh, this one and we'll give this minus 2 score here and after giving the score we will use a small arrowhead that will be pointing towards the cell from where the score was taken okay so this score was taken from this previous cell we will use a small arrow to um, to keep a track that from where this score came from right now next is to compute the value for this particular cell okay which is t of 2 and 0 again we will look for uh, score coming from the diagonal there is no diagonal no score is coming from uh, this position also there is no score coming from this position and 
we have a score coming from i minus 1 jsl okay so let me rub this and update this so t i minus 1 j is this cell okay and the score present in this cell is minus 2 and what we'll do we will add to this score gap penalty which is our minus 2 so the total score for this cell will be 4 we will write 4 here and again we will use a small arrowhead to point to that cell from where this score is coming right so similarly when you fill uh, all these cells uh, in in uh, in this um, row so it will be the same the next score will be minus 6 sorry I should change the color here so next score should will be minus 6 and the arrowhead will be pointing towards this direction then we have minus 8 arrow will be pointing towards this direction and then we'll have minus 10 and arrow will be point towards this direction okay so the these cells uh, where I have written the score in green color uh, they will be calculated just uh, you know exactly like we have uh, calculated the score for the previous two cells clear now we will move to the next step let me rub this for you okay now we will compute the score for this particular cell and this particular cell is t of 0 and 1 that means i is 0 and j is 1 again for this expression uh, there is no diagonal there is no i minus 1 j minus 1 cell here so there is nothing coming from this particular cell let's see what we have in i minus 1 j so i minus 1 is 0 minus 1 which is minus 1 and 1 minus 1 and 1 does not exist so obviously we will not be getting any score from this position and for from this position that is t of i j minus 1 i is 0 j minus 1 is also 0 so t of 0 and 0 we have a 0 at this particular position okay so we will have we'll get score from t i j minus 1 that is a 0 plus a gap penalty of minus 2 and the score for this particular cell will be minus 2 so here is minus 2 and then again we will place an arrow head pointing towards that cell from where we are getting the score right let me rub this now the next cell that we are going to uh, compute value is t of 1 and 1 that is this this cell okay so let's see what we have here so t i minus 1 j minus 1 which means this cell we have a score of 0 okay so we'll just write score 0 here plus now we will see if this is a match or a mismatch so a and t it is a mismatch and for a mismatch we will be we will be using a score of minus 1 so we will add minus 1 to this 0 minus 1 is minus 1 okay so from t i minus 1 j minus 1 uh, we will get the score of 1 for this particular cell now let's compute the score for t i minus 1 j so i is 1 1 minus 1 is 0 and j is 1 so t of 0 1 
is this particular cell okay so we have a score of minus 2 so we will get minus 2 from ti minus 1 j plus we will give a gap penalty of minus 2 here minus 2 minus 2 will be minus 4 so the total score for from coming from this uh, particular cell will be minus 4 the next step is to calculate ti and i here is 1 and j minus 1 j minus 1 is 0 so t of 1 0 which is uh, sorry this cell okay so we have minus 2 at this position we will add mine will write the score minus 2 plus we will add the gap penalty to this score and this score will turn out to be minus 4 so out of these three values that we have calculated minus 1 is the best value okay so we will write minus 1 here and we will place an arrowhead pointing towards this 0 that we are getting this score from this particular cell okay so and so forth you will be um, calculating values score for each and every cell in this matrix until you um, reach the bottom right corner of the matrix so we'll we'll try to uh, fill out one more cell and the rest of the matrix uh, you can you know uh, do it yourself and I'll just show you the final outcome of the uh, scoring scheme okay so next is t of i is 2 now and j is 1 t of 2 1 and we are basically talking about this particular cell okay so let's see t of i minus 1 j minus 1 which is uh, this score okay so t i minus 1 j minus 1 we have a value of minus 2 here plus now we will see if there is a match or a mismatch a and g they uh, do not match with each other so we will place uh, we will use a score of minus 1 because this is a mismatch so minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3 okay so t i minus 1 j i minus 1 here is uh, 1 1 and at uh, t of 1 1 we have a score of minus 1 okay so we will use this score minus 1 plus gap penalty of minus 2 and we'll have a score of we'll get a score of minus 3 similarly t i uh, j minus 1 i is um, 2 j minus 1 is 0 2 t of 2 0 uh, sorry t is yeah uh, 2 0 is uh, this score this one okay so we have a score of minus 4 here plus we'll add the gap penalty of minus 2 and the final score will turn out to be minus 6 so out of these three values that we have calculated minus 3 is the best value the largest value okay so we will write minus 3 here okay and now the score is coming from two directions from diagonal and from the left one okay so we will place two arrows here one will be pointing towards the diagonal and other one will be pointing towards this cell this will show that this minus 3 uh, was calculated and this score is coming from two direction one from the diagonal and one from the left cell okay so this is how you will uh, calculate score for each and every cell in this uh, matrix until you reach at this position 
so by the time you have reached this position each and every uh, cell will have us will have some score and it will also have a an arrow head that will be pointing towards that cell from where the score came okay so now you, you take some time and fill up the rest of the matrix yourself and i'll show you the final result so that you can match your answer with the final answer okay so once you have computed all the scores for uh, each and every cell of the matrix the final result will be something like this uh, that you have all the scores here and also you have arrowheads that are pointing towards the cell from where the score came to the uh, particular cell now the next step is the trace back step we have to now uh, trace back and this is particularly very easy you start with the uh, lower light right uh, corner or the lower right cell of the matrix that is here and you will just follow the uh, arrowheads okay so um, sorry so this cell it's pointing towards this cell so you'll move to this cell and then you'll move you know just follow the arrowheads like this so uh, this is how you do the trace packing uh, right uh, start from the lower right corner of the matrix and just follow the uh, arrows and um, reach the uh, upper left corner of the matrix so the same trace pack is shown in pink color here we have sequence 1 and sequence 2 on x and y axis respectively okay now to work out the best alignment follow the trace back from top left to bottom right and look at the letters aligned to each other okay so uh, for uh, cell number one that is shown in yellow here here is the first cell doesn't correspond to any letter okay so we'll just ignore it the second is uh, minus two the second cell is an a in sequence number s2 but there is nothing corresponding to the Sequ uh, to this in sequence number one so here you can see that while generating the alignment there is a gap introduced um, in the s1 sequence one that is this gap i'm talking about and then we have an a the third cell is t in sequence number two and uh, and t in sequence number one so we have t and t aligning with each other the fourth cell in this matrix is uh, or in this trace bag is uh, path is mine uh, is c in sequence number two and g in the sequence number one so we'll just write g and c in front of each other as a mismatch there will be no matching the fifth cell is a g in sequence number s2 and g in sequence number s1 and this g and g they are aligning with each other they are matching with each other so we are you know placing a small you know line between these two nucleotides showing that these two sequence uh, nucleotides they are uh, matching with each other the sixth cell is a t in sequence number two and t in the sequence number uh, one so again we'll have a match here we'll have an alignment here and in the seventh cell is nothing in sequence number two because we already have accounted for the t um, present at the position number five so there is nothing in sequence number s2 and g uh, is present in sequence number uh, one so we have a, a g here and we have introduced a gap here so now you can see you now you you you, you will understand that why you know while uh, computing the score when it's coming from the diagonal we will uh, we will be used to you know use that score and add uh, the match or mismatch score to it and whenever the score is coming from the left cell or from the top cell uh, we will be we you know used to uh, add a gap penalty every time to the uh, already score present in the uh, in that cell okay so this is how a uh, uh, sequence alignment using dynamic programming uh, works in this case we talked about Needleman's and Wunsch algorithm here you can see that these two sequences they are aligned end to end with each other and uh, this is the best possible alignment that can be generated uh, by this method so I hope uh, you have understood this method and if there is any question I'll be happy to answer those questions in our next QA session and for those who are 
uh, watching this uh, uh, video on on YouTube they can uh, you know uh, contact me and I'll be uh, happy to help uh, you guys uh, next in the next lecture we will be discussing uh, Smith Waterman algorithm for a local sequence alignment and to understand that you should you know you should be um, clear uh, about Needleman's and Woods how this algorithm works and how do we calculate the scores and what's the trace back step and all these uh, you know um, concepts and once it's clear in your mind then uh, understanding needle uh, Smith Waterman al algorithm will be very easy for you okay so I'll request you all to uh, uh, you know repeat this example and do it all by yourself and see if you can uh, do it or not until then Allah Hafiz